Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D. Today we got something a little different. We're gonna take a break from the pipeline and from the shaders. We're gonna incorporate a very sexy tool into our software here. It's gonna make our future explorations a lot nicer to work with. So, what is the tool? It's called ImGUI. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's the way I'm gonna see it. ImGUI. What does it do? Well, what it is, is it's a library for, uh, for graphical user interfaces. And uh, the IM stands for Immediate Mode. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But it's uh, it's very simple. It's very easy to incorporate. It's very easy to use. And uh, it's completely platform independent. So you can basically plop it in any project you want. OpenGL, Direct3D, Vulkan, SFML, anything you want. Um, you just take the core and then you implement a small subset of functions that adapt in GUI to your uh, specific platform and it'll just all work. Uh, and also it has a ton of those adapter functions pre-built for very common platforms, like for example, DirectX 11, Direct3D 11. So we won't have to implement that ourselves. Uh, so yeah, this is what it looks like. It's not a particularly, uh, it doesn't have a ton of customization in terms of the visual appeal of it, but it has a ton of tools and that's really all that we need here. Lots of different ways of doing controls and stuff. Uh, and it's way easier than trying to implement a GUI system yourself. So this is what we are going to be going with. Let's get right down to it. So if we look at the commits here, you can see the first commit here. I just add the imGUI files to the project. Um, there's a bunch of them here. You can sort these files into two categories, the core of imGUI and then the implementation files. So these four files with impl in the name, these are the files, the adapters, that adapt the core of imGUI to your specific platform. And there's two parts to it. There's the, uh, the Win32 part, and those are the adapters for stuff like the keyboard and uh, the mouse, stuff like that. And then you have the DirectX adapter, and that is the adapter for the actual graphical output of the GUI. And the incorporation of imGUI into a project, it's super simple. You just drag the files into your project and you're basically done. Now we got to do is actually hook these calls into their specific places. So in the next commit here, I do a minimal test of imGUI. I just get the, the bare bones set up. I had to do a little bit of modification of the implementation files here. Um, so I made them include some stuff that uh, we want from our framework like uh, ChiliWin and graphics and I made them include imGUI so I don't have to do it uh, manually in every file that includes this include. And what else did I do in Windows 32? I also include ChiliWin, imGUI, and, and a couple of these functions, the header wasn't declaring them. Uh, in the example code that in, imGUI had, they were just declaring it uh, as a prototype uh, for whatever reason. And I figured it's just nicer to put that shit in the header, ain't it? So I put it in here. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a huge difference. Here is one fairly big difference. Um, of course, the windows include stuff because we are using our uh, chili win. We don't have to put this stuff in there, so I get rid of it. And I also get rid of X input because it was causing me problems building. Uh, and I'm not sure what the problems are, but since we're not using the, uh, the gamepad specifically for interacting with the GUI, there's no reason for me to mess around with that bullshit. So I just removed all the gamepad stuff from here, and it works fine. So, that is the modifications I made to imGUI. Now, what are the modifications that we need to make to our own code to incorporate imGUI and hook into it? There are a bunch of them. First of all, I create an imGUI manager, which is similar to my other managers. It manages the, uh, the, the uh, in initialization and cleanup of the imGUI subsystem. So, you call these three functions, to start imGUI up, and you call this one to shut it down. imGUI uses a lot of globals and uh, stuff like that, so that's why you're not seeing any member data here or anything. Now in window.cpp, we need to uh, we need to feed our input, you know, the uh, keyboard mouse input into imGUI because it's going to want to read that input and uh, interface with it. So what we do is, well, when we create the window here, we are going to init, initialize imGUI. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, this might be a problem if we do multiple windows. Because uh, like I said, imGUI uses globals, so it's not a per instance sort of thing. So you might, 
might want to yeah this is this is a little weird because there's only one init function here you pass a single handle to window but if you have multiple windows uh it's going to be a problem probably getting im gui to work with multiple windows i believe it can be done but uh, I'm not sure how that works. It's just, uh, just an artifact of the way that Imgui was built using lots of globals and stuff like that. It's going to make it a little restricted, but it doesn't matter. We're not going to actually need multiple windows each that has Imgui support, so that's fine. But if we do create a program that uh, spawns multiple windows, we probably want to make this a little more sophisticated so that it'll only try to initialize Imgui for one of them. But anyways, so we initialize Imgui in the constructor here for window, and uh, we shut it down in the destructor, the just the Win32 part that is. Uh, and then in here for handle message, Imgui Win32 has a WinProc handler that goes first here, and it will have first dibs on this message. And if it returns true, then this should uh, quick return without doing any other processing. Uh, I don't think it returns true that often, and there are other ways that imgui signals that it's done uh, or that uh, it has completely processed an input message, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. So those are the main things you need to do to hook imgui into your uh, Windows system. You also have to hook it into graphics, uh, and I think we're going to hook it a little better later on, but to begin with, we're just hooking the init into our uh, graphics constructor here. And uh, what we're doing is the initialization function for imgui. It needs the device and it needs the context because it is going to, the imgui implementation is going to use those guys to draw its GUI stuff onto the screen. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't, uh, I don't think I'm calling impl shutdown function in the destructor for graphics. Uh, so that might be something I should look into. I mean, I'm going to make myself a note. But yeah, we've hooked the initialization of the Windows part and the graphics part of Imgui uh, and the Windows input. Now in app.h, what are we going to include here? Well, we can include the Imgui manager so that it sets up the, the core subsystem before anything else happens. And in app.cpp, we are going to do a bunch of stuff. So what are we going to do? Well, when you are going to draw your GUI, the first thing you want to do is you want to call new frame on those two uh, implementation details. So implementation for the graphics and the windows, they both provide new frame functions that you have to call before you start drawing a new frame of imGUI stuff. And then you call imGUI new frame. Uh, yeah, I know it's a, it's a little clunky. This is just another, it's another artifact of the way that imGUI was built, but it's not that bad and you can sequester it. And it's very simple. So, you know, it's good. It's good enough. So we, we call new frame on all these three different uh, separate parts. And then we are ready to go. So we have a bool here. Just says whether we're going to show the demo window. And if it is true, then we just call imgui show demo window. So this function is provided by the imgui core. And it's just a huge, it's a window that has a huge number of features to demonstrate all the different things you can do with imgui. And it provides that really good reference for those things. So you, you call the show window function. Then when you're done calling all of your show window functions and all your stuff in imgui, you finally call render on the imgui, and that'll render all the stuff to the imgui's uh, internal format. And then you call render draw data, which is an impl function that takes the imgui's internal platform independent um, data structure of draw data and it translates it into the draw calls of, you know, whatever platform you're using, in our case, DirectX 11. And then you're done. You can, uh, you can present that frame. And if you do that, this is what you get. You get this window here. It's got a menu. It's got uh, lots of different sections here. And you can see demonstrations of all the different things. You got all the different widgets. Here's a demonstration of combo widgets, uh, text, text stuff sliders oh look at all look at all this cool stuff you could you can spend quite a lot of time going through all this crazy bs uh and it's very useful it's a very useful reference here uh and you can minimize windows and stuff like this in uh, imgui and because we had that bool thing uh we have a close button here you can close it one thing that's interesting about imgui 
as you see here, uh, like if I, if, I'm, if I change the size and I move it down here, close the window, and I start up again, remembers that, remembers that position. It actually stores a, uh, it outputs an INI file to your directory uh, by default, and when you start your program, it'll load that up and it'll remember the state of your windows. It's very nice, it does that automatically. So, very cool, very simple. Um, well, let's, let's try a little, uh, let's try a little experiment. What happens if you put the imgui draw call uh, before we draw our scene stuff? It's uh, interesting, right? So you get your draw order. Imgui doesn't really have, at least not as far as I can tell, any uh, concept or sense of uh, Z. So you can see that's, that's an interesting variation. I'm not sure if I'd recommend it, but um, the, the takeaway of this is that Imgui, at least not as far as I can see, has any sense of uh, Z, Z coordinate, Z buffering, depth buffering. So uh, it's the draw order that matters. And you probably want to draw Imgui last, especially since it has all that transparency and stuff. Uh, but I mean, if you're feeling feisty, you could draw your GUI behind your geometry. It's a thing that you could do. We're not going to do that. Now, after I do that minimal test, I want to do a little bit of improvement on the Imgui flow, just uh, sexy the code up a little more. So in graphics.h, I added a new function called begin frame, which is going to wrap a bunch of stuff together and just put it all into one function to make my life easier. And I added some controls here to enable and disable imgui. Uh, and then in graphics.cpp, what am I doing here? Well, I mean, on graphics end frame, if imgui isn't enabled, I call render and the impl render. And what else here? On begin frame here, if imgui is enabled, I call all this begin stuff. And then on begin frame, I do the clearing of the render target and the depth stencil. So this will all be wrapped up in a single begin frame. And then lastly here, you've got those functions to enable and disable imgui if you prefer. Uh, in app.h, uh, oh, I just moved the, uh, the show demo window into the app member data and what else down here so i replace i replace clear buffer here with begin frame uh and i at the beginning i do have a little control here if i'm pressing space i will disable imgui otherwise i enable imgui so this allows us to disable it and see what that looks like as we're rendering then we render our scene then we show the demo window and then we end frame and the, that stuff there takes care of all this uh, imgui new frame and render bullshit so stuff is cleaner it still works the same except you can press space to disable the entire gui system if you'd like uh, i won't show that because i think you can pretty much imagine how that's going to look in the next commit here i do a little playing around with imgui trying to figure out how to uh to bend it to my will because this is my first time using imgui uh, by the way as well so just doing this is my this is basically a log of my experimentation with it uh so i create a member data speed factor that replaces this one here and that is going to control the rate of the uh, the simulation the motion of our objects so we get rid of this uh, enabling control doesn't really don't really need it uh and what we do here is when we're getting delta time we multiply that by the speed factor. And the speed factor is controlled by an imgui window that we create here. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a window called simulation speed. And it's very simple to create a window. All you do is you call imgui begin. And it returns a bool because any window can be minimized. So if the window is in a minimized state, uh, then this will return false. And then we just want to call imgui end to close that window. When the way that imgui works, the immediate part of it is it's it's a lot different than a normal GUI system if you're used to working with them. In a normal GUI system, you construct all the parts at the beginning of the program or whenever, and you bind the inputs to data, and then you just run the GUI and it just runs. But in an immediate GUI system, what you do is you create all the parts of the GUI afresh every single frame. So every single frame, we create this window, we create all the controls in the window, 
and then it gets drawn. And in the next frame, we do it all over again. And the MGUI subsystem uh, behind the scenes, it will remember certain state data, like whether a window has been uh, minimized or not. So you don't have to worry about that. All you do is you call begin, you add all your controls, and then you call end and it's done. So the controls that we're adding here uh, are a slider that is going to control a floating point value. So you, you use slider float and uh, we're going to give it a label speed factor. We are going to have it control the speed factor uh, member variable that is in app. And we want to control it from range of between zero and four. Uh, then I just add a little text in here for uh, in interest's sake. I display the average number of milliseconds per frame and the frame rate. And MGUI supports uh, formatting that's basically the same as a formatting that you would get in printf. So we can, you know, use the format specifiers here, format specifier for floating point values, give the number of decimal places. And here, uh, MGUI, there is a thing get IO and you can access a bunch of different stuff from that. And one of the things you can access is frame rate. So we call get IO and we get the frame rate. Well, we get the, the in a thousand divided by the frame rate, which gives us the number of milliseconds per frame and then just the frame rate, which gives us the frame rate. There you go. And the last thing we do here is I add a little input for testing sake. I wanted to test how the text input works. So I have this one input into this buffer here. And I think you can figure out how that works just by looking at it. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So here's what you get from that code. And I hope it's not that uh, surprising. You can see here we can slide the speed factor and change the speed of our simulation here. Very nice. It's telling us our frame rate is locked at 60, which makes sense because we're using VSync and my monitor runs at 60 frames per second. And we can type. Pretty sweet. Now here's something interesting. Uh, this is a normal text input. We can input spaces. But if I press space, it stops the simulation. So what we would want to do is if we are typing characters into a text box, we would like MGUI to swallow that textbook input and not pass it on to our application. Uh, but it's not doing that right now. So we got to make we got to make some uh, further modifications. So if we look at this commit here, MGUI input capture and stifle. Uh, in windows.cpp, we just make some uh, small modifications here. And that is on all of these messages here, like syskey down, on all these messages here, like the key down messages, etc. we check to see if imgui want capture keyboard. And if imgui want capture keyboard, then we let imgui capture keyboard, which is to say that we don't process that message. We say imgui has complete control, they have handled it, and we should not look at that input. So we just break out of this uh, switch here. So I do that for all these different Im input boys, for want capture input and want capture mouse. This IMIO here, I just, um, I get that at the very beginning. I call imgui get IO. Actually, now that I think about it, I should probably make this an auto reference perhaps, but eh, whatever. And now we see when the text uh, input has the focus, I can press space, doesn't affect the simulation. But if I, it doesn't have the focus and I press space, it stops the simulation, working as intended. Beautiful. And then remove that text input because it was just there for test purposes. And now we get to the final part of this video, which is I'm going to create another window and I'm going to use it to control our camera. Because at the present moment, the camera is basically stuck at the origin, pointing down the positive Z axis, I believe. Uh, we can't move that, but it would be nice to be able to move that and that would also be a good test of our window for controlling things about our uh, test code here. So the first step is to add the ability to add a view or camera matrix into our stack of transformation matrices. Uh, right now we're just using the model and the projection matrix. We gotta add our view matrix into that chain. Uh, so what we do is in graphics.h, I add a function or two here, set camera, which sets a matrix for the camera or the view, if you like, and get camera, which allows you to get that matrix. And then in here, in private data, I've added uh, projection and camera. And then in private data, I added the camera and I also moved the projection up here just to organize things a little bit. Beautiful. Go on to graphics.h. It's very simple. Set just assigns, get returns. The other main change here is in transform C buff. Before, 
it was getting the model matrix from uh, from the drawable, that is its parent, and it was getting the projection matrix from graphics. And now it is going to get the model, the projection, and it's also going to get the camera matrix from graphics. It's going to slam all those three boys together and it is going to bind them to the pipeline. So because of that change in all of our different drawables here, now uh, this stack of matrices here for the model, we were adding a translation to basically pull them away from the camera, which basically had the effect of making it look like we were pulling the camera away from all of our models. You can look at it either way. It doesn't really matter. The only thing is, now that we have an independent camera, we don't need to add this to all of our different drawables. So I remove it from all these different bad boys here. And then in app.cpp, uh, what we're going to do is in our constructor, we're going to add an extra step here where we set the camera. So we set the projection and the camera in the constructor. And because I'm pulling the camera away by 20 again, uh, it's going to look exactly the same as before. It's just working a lot more differently under the hood. And once we've got that set up, now we can actually create our camera object to control that camera matrix. So I create a little object here, camera.h, and uh, it's got member data for all the different parameters that control the camera. So R controls the distance of the camera away from the origin. And then theta and phi are rotating the camera around the origin. So these three guys control the position of the camera in space. You can think of theta as rotation uh, around the equator and then phi as rotation towards the north pole or the south pole. And then these three guys here control the orientation of the camera. So after you've set its position, then you can pitch, yaw, and roll the camera. Yaw! And then for the camera here, we've got three functions. Uh, one of them is to get the matrix. That basically just translates these parameters into a transformation matrix. Uh, we have reset, which resets these bad boys. And then we have spawn control window, which spawns an imGUI window that can control these parameters. So here, reset, very simple. Spawn control window is not that complicated either. Again, we call imGUI begin. Uh, we call the window camera. And then we have two texts that just uh, show the different uh, sections. Here's a section that controls the position and the orientation. And you've just got sliders here. And there are specialized sliders for angle. Uh, and what they do is they allow you to control the angle in terms of degrees, but they will set the angle variable in terms of radians. That's a very nice little feature that they got there. Shilly approves. And then all these uh, control widgets, they just bind to the member data, the private member data of the camera. We also demonstrate here the usage of a button widget. And the way it works is you call it with the, uh, the text on the button and the return value will be whether it's pressed or not. And if it, when it receives a uh, press, it will call this function here, which is the reset function of the camera. Now, the most complicated part here is the actual concatenation of matrices that uh, constitutes the camera transform. Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing this in two parts. First, we start with the position of the camera at the origin, and then we pull it out in the negative Z by R. So we're, that's giving us the distance away from the origin, right? And then we rotate that camera position uh, with phi and theta. So we get it in position uh, relative to the origin. Now once we have that, we call a function look at, which allows us to take a position of the camera and to take a position to look at. Now once we have the position of the camera, we call a function XM matrix look at. And uh, what that does is it allows us to give the position of the camera and then a position to look at and an up position for the camera uh, for its, um, what do you call it, its roll, its corkscrew uh, orientation, if you like. Uh, so you give them those three values and it will give you a transformation that gives you a camera that is like that. So yeah, we got its position. We want to look at the origin. That's just the zero vector. And we always want our camera to be oriented such that uh, the top is pointing up. So we give it a, a Y of one. That's a vector that's just pointing straight up. And so now we have a camera that is in the correct position and it's looking at the center, but we also want the ability to roll, pitch, and yaw the view. So we, at the end, we concatenate with a roll, pitch, yaw. And all this stuff together gives us a nice camera control. So now to incorporate that, we add a camera to our application. And in app.cpp, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the set camera from the constructor. 
we're now going to set the camera every frame. So we call graphics set camera and we get the matrix from our camera object. And then down here, after we've done our simulation speed window, we call spawn control window on our camera. And that gives us a second window that allows us to control the camera parameters. And all is well in the world. Take a look at this beauty. As before, we can control the speed of the simulation, but we can also control how we pull the camera in and out. There's the R. Here's the theta rotating around the equator. And here's the phi rotating, rotating towards the poles. And you can see how they kind of uh, work together to control the position of the camera. Right now, the camera is still always pointing at the origin, but you can also change the orientation of the camera with these guys down here. You can pitch it up and down, you can yaw left or right, and you can roll to do that corkscrew. And if you mess it all up, you press reset, and you're back to where you started. Beautiful. Got some status text here to tell you if the simulation is paused or not when you press the space bar. And there you have it. We have our whole system wired up with ImGUI, ready to control all sorts of different parameters as we explore different kinds of shaders and effects, because it would be really a big pain in the ass if we had to bind all of those controls to the keyboard and trying to remember which one controls the position of light one and which ones control whatever else other bullshit who knows it's way easier if you've got a gui that tells you what everything does and is very intuitive and we now have the technology to put that into practice pretty easily as necessary now in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to use this technology and we're going to implement our first real-time dynamic lighting shaders with lights in the world. And we're going to use ImGUI to control those lights. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.